I am absolutely going to destroy this screen protector to find out for you if it's as good as it claims to be. This is the Zag InvisiShield XTR2 glass screen protector for the iPhone 14 Pro Max. It's supposed to have a dust-free installation and be made of a super strong material. It's selling for $60 on Amazon. Is it worth the price? Stick with me until the end of the video to find out if it arrives. I'd also like to thank Extra Wallets for sponsoring this video, but more on that later on. So in addition to being super strong and have an anti-dust installation, it also has anti-reflective technology as well as blue light filtration. Okay, so here we have a guide. Here's your cleaning kit and your one screen protector. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to clean off your screen and they include the alcohol wipe. Then you're gonna to wanna to dry it off now supposedly if there is some dust left on your screen when you do the installation, you shouldn't be able to see it underneath the screen, at least that's what they claim. So then you're gonna take your phone and just put it into the tray. Make sure that you put the phone's camera up to where it says top on the guide. So it looks like we have a piece of dust on the screen. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that there because they claim that it shouldn't interfere with the installation. So now we're gonna take our screen protector. You're going to make sure that the sticker portion is underneath the screen, and we're going to peel off the underside protector, making sure you don't touch the screen after you do that. And the part with the sticker, that's the part that's gonna go into the top guide here. So all we need to do is simply peel off the bottom protector, just like that. And then we're gonna put it into the guide holes on the top and on the bottom. And as you can see, it's already starting to adhere to the screen. Then once that's done, all you need to do is peel up on the top protector, and then take your phone out of the guide. Okay, so the portion of the screen that did have a little speck of dust in it does seem to be doing exactly what it claims to do. If you really look at it, you can see a little dimple uh, underneath the glass where the dust is, but normally looking at the screen, you shouldn't see it. So thumbs up for that. There is this weird little section right here where there's a, a mark. It's on the underside of the screen protector. I've tried to, you know, wipe it away, but it seems to be underneath the screen. And yet, as you saw, I never touched the underside of the screen protector. So I don't know why that's there, but that's a mark that will not come off the screen protector. And for $60, I expect this screen to be flawless. So that's definitely not a good sign. So right off the bat, just looking at the screen protector, there does seem to be some sort of misalignment. And as you saw, there's really no way for you to mess this up because it comes with a guide. So this is from the factory. As you can see, the screen protector comes right up to the bottom of the phone here. There's really no gap. But if we look at the top, there's a huge gap between the top of the phone and the screen protector. I'm not sure why that is, but that's strike number two. Now, other than those few things, installation was really easy as far as touch goes. The glass feels just like the glass that's on the phone. Now this is a full coverage screen protector, so it does cover the camera and the sensors for Face ID on the top of your phone. So let's see if it interferes with that. No issues with Face ID. It looks crystal clear even though the screen did have a slight green tinge to it. Touch working perfectly fine, it's nice and smooth, and it's very clear. So no problems there. So now we're gonna see if it's case friendly. This is the case I've been using by Phone Rebel. This is the Gen 4, in case you're wondering. So it looks to fit pretty good with the case, except for that huge gap at the top. Comes right up to the edges of the case, except for the top there. Don't see any lifting, so that's definitely a plus. Now as far as fingerprints goes, it does seem to pick up some fingerprints, but you should be able to easily wipe those away without any effort, and it does. So that's another plus there. Now we're gonna move on to the drop test and the scratch test, but first, really quick, let me tell you about today's sponsor. If you or someone you know has a wallet big enough to take down a Puma and you're looking for something slim and next gen, check out Exter. 
They make premium wallets using materials such as carbon fiber, aluminum, and leather. You can even get ones that you can put an AirTag into so you'll never lose your wallet again. They're really slim and have a really cool feature that presents your most used cards at the press of a button. But don't waste time. They have a sale going on right now where you can get up to 25% off. Just use my offer code HITECHCHECK. I'll put a link in the description if you want to know more. Okay, so we're going to be dropping this 2.4 ounce steel metal ball onto the screen protector from a starting height of two feet. If it survives that, I'm going to raise it up foot by foot until the screen protector actually cracks, if it does. So we're going to start off at two feet. So it did crack on the edge of the screen protector, but that's not really fair because that's a weak point for pretty much any screen protector. So we're going to continue with the drop test at three feet. All right, so here we are at three feet, four feet, so because the ball created a crack on the edge of the screen protector here, the four foot drop test can't be conclusive because the screen protector was already compromised from the first hit. Now with that being said, I've done other drop tests where the screen protector was compromised, but I continued on with the test much like I did with this one, but those screen protectors actually lasted a lot higher than this one did. So that should give you some peace of mind. So now let's go ahead and move on to the scratch test. So first we're going to start off with a level 5, then we're going to move on to a level 6, and then finally a level 7. So if we take a closer look, there are no scratches at the level 5, but the level 6 and 7 definitely make scratches and they pretty much look the same. So this screen protector is pretty much on par with other premium tempered glass screen protectors as far as the scratch protection goes. So even without the drop test being the way that it was, there's still those issues that the screen protector had as far as alignment and the little markings that were underneath the screen that I don't think should have been there for $60. So would I recommend the screen protector to you? I would definitely say no. I expect a lot more from a screen protector that costs $60 because there are other screen protectors out there that are half the price that offer better protection and aren't misaligned on your phone. But in case you still want to purchase it yourself, I will be putting a link in the description. And if you guys like me and you want to support my channel, please use that link when you're making your purchase because it helps me keep purchasing products to do reviews for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that little notification bell to let you guys know when I put out new videos. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Later. And if you guys want to see a video that I did testing a whole bunch of different screen protectors that are much better than this one, make sure you check out this video right here.